I, I'm not going to reintroduce myself. I'm Rocky, as uh, Christine had mentioned, and uh, I'm a double winner, too. I'm an uh, alcoholic in recovery, and my son, uh, who is now 36 years old, is uh, sober seven years. So I've been where you are, and uh, one of the reasons that I'm passionate about this job, and I fell in love with Jeff and Beth. Early on, I met them a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, Beth and Jeff were our speakers this evening. Early on, they grasped the truth that addiction is a family disease. And they knew that if they wanted to be a healthy, uh, you know, family unit again, they were going to have to work on their own recovery at the same time that their son was working on his individual recovery. So, uh, they participate in so many of the alumni events and, you know, they've just taken it upon themselves to get healthy and be available uh, for other people in recovery, uh, like those of us on this uh, on this program this evening. So uh, I want to introduce to you, Jeff and Beth, my good friends. Let's welcome them. Where did they go? Uh, we're here. We're here. Okay. I'm going to spotlight you so that everyone can see you and I'll take it off when we're done. Okay. okay. If I can remember. Hi, I'm Jeff. Here we go. And this is Beth. So I'll do a couple housekeeping things. We have three pets and they're not real um, Zoom etiquette based. So if I jump off a couple times, it's just to control them. So, um, and one other thing I'll mention is that neither Beth and I are really public speakers but this too has changed in our lives and we're very glad to to be available to speak and share our um learning experience and our you know our uh, story with this and how the three c's has kind of impacted us so um beth's gonna actually kind of tell our story um and i'll kind of interlude a little bit but again we're both really glad to be here so thanks for having us okay and our, our cat's already trying to join the meeting. Um, Rocky had asked us if we could share our experience with the three C's, which as uh, Christine mentioned, our, um, I didn't cause it, I can't control it, I can't cure it. Um, when Rocky asked, we immediately said yes, uh, without any doubts or hesitation. Um, I can honestly say now I'm a bit nervous, but, uh, in preparing for speaking this evening, I, I did reread the description of this 12 week family series and the goal to provide um, a valuable opportunity for families to connect, learn and grow together really struck me. This was a good reminder to remember that we're all here together for a common purpose. We all have different stories but there's a lot of similarities in our stories as well. Um, as we connect with each other and realize that we're not alone, we learn from each other and get stronger and healthier together too. Not only have we grown together with our new recovery family, our own family has grown together in a way that is stronger than ever. It's the bittersweet irony, irony of addiction and substance use disorder that out of something so devastating, sad, and scary, there is opportunity for all of us to recover into something beautiful, strong, and, and healthy. Our first time on campus at Karen was in December of 2022. We knew our son needed help, but I was shattered, lost, terrified, isolated, empty, and numb all at the same time that day. Um, but with all of that, I had no idea that I was sick too. My husband and I had countless conversations to try to figure out what we had done so very wrong, what we did to make our son totally turn away from the wonderfully kind, funny, loving, and giving kid he had always been to someone we didn't even know or understand anymore. We were isolating ourselves back then to avoid answering questions, to punish ourselves, to avoid seeing other people and to avoid other families being happy. 
Not long after our son's arrival at Karen, we attended the family education program. We walked into that room for the first time, not knowing what to expect. Um, yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> um, and we were honestly surprised to see more than 30 other people who have been living like us. We thought we were alone, but we found out for the first time that we weren't. Though I don't wish this disease on anyone or any family, finding out for the first time that we were not alone was so powerful that I could, I could feel that power. We learned a lot that weekend, and one of the very first concepts we learned were the three C's. We didn't cause it, we can't control it, and we can't cure it. My husband and I were dumbfounded. We didn't cause it. We immediately looked at each other. I could have cried from the relief of hearing those few simple words. Another thing we learned at the family education program was that there were recovery programs for us too. And we were very quickly and gratefully started to go to Al-Anon meetings. I begin nearly every day now by reading the messages for the day from the Al-Anon daily readers in those readings, I learn something new. I connect strongly with a share and I start my day with a feeling of peace. In a few quick minutes, I accomplish something good for myself. I accomplish something um, that brings peace, a peace that I hadn't known for a long time. Jeff will now share the January 7th message from um, Hope for Today which is one of the Al-Anon Daily Readers. And this is someone else's experience with the three C's. Um, and just before I start reading that, just to share too, um, going to Karen for the first time, the family education program, I didn't really understand recovery. And I really thought we were going there to learn how to fix Ethan, like what we were gonna do to cure it and control him. Um, and I absorbed a lot of that that day, but even when we went not long after that family education program to Al-Anon to our first meeting, I still thought I was gonna learn how to fix him um, there. So um, it's been a lot of education and um, I'm very grateful for that. And so we did, I, I liked when we were talking about the three C's, um, Beth had actually come across this and we really like how it describes um, you know, the, them in a, a little bit of a nice synopsis that somebody else offered um, into this book. So I'll just share that with you. One of the first Al-Anon sayings I remember hearing, known as the three C's, embodies the concept of powerlessness over alcoholism. I didn't cause it, I can't control it, and I can't cure it. I like the message of the three C's. I didn't cause it relieves me of any lingering guilt I may feel. I only, if I only had a better son, worked harder at school, done more chores around the house, or fought, not fought so much with my siblings. My parents may not have become alcoholics. In reality, their suffering from the disease has nothing to do with me. The I can't control it gives me permission to live my life and take care of myself. No longer do I have to spend my energy trying to manipulate people and situations so that alcoholics will drink less. Nothing I say or do, or don't say or do, will have any effect on the alcoholic's choice to drink. That choice is completely out of my hands. And the I can't cure it remind me, reminds me that I don't have to repeat my insane behavior over and over again, hoping for a different result. I don't have to keep giving one last exhausted effort to stop the drinking, hoping that this is the time it will work. I don't have to search for the magic cure that isn't there. Instead, I can use my energy for my recovery. And then one other thing on that page from the Courage to Change, uh, Al-Anon literature, active alcoholics are people who drink. They don't drink because of you or me, but because they are alcoholics. No matter what I do, I will not change this fact. So we really like that. Um, that just kind of explains how that, you know, came to us and how we we learned um, about that. And again, like Beth said, our relief and really that we didn't cause it um, was good. The, you know, we can't control it provided us relief as well. Um, 
And we also learned along with that, um, part of that you can't control it is that you might contribute um, to it and you know, being careful on how you might enable the um, addict is important as well. Um, so again, um, I'll let Beth just continue on with the story, but um, that's just some of our experience. Thank so. you. I'm sure we all relate to at least one thing in that reading. As a parent, child, spouse, or sibling, we all want to see our loved ones get better and stay safe. We all have had thoughts of what we did to cause this, and we tried so hard through our words and actions to try to control our loved one's path. My own experience with the three C's is no different. It was the pandemic that started to shine light on our son's troubles. He came home from college at the start of the quarantine. Initially, I have to admit that I was um, thinking that that time was a gift. I never thought our son would live at home again. And here he was, we were getting more time together. And we did have fun at first, discovering all sorts of new and different shows on TV. We were creating a bucket list of things we wanted to do once this two week quarantine was over. Um, but before too long, uh, we started to find enormous numbers of beer cans in his room. He made good and not so good efforts to hide the cans. All I could think of was, are we really that bad and unbearable that he needs to drink heavily just to cope with living with us? My husband and I would have conversations with each other and try to figure out what we did wrong to cause what was happening from our son's birth until that day. Our family, just like any other, had gone through ups and downs, many of which were completely out of our control. In hindsight, I realized that, um, you know, we were only ever trying to do our, our very best with what we had and what we knew at the time. I've learned to become more gentle with myself, and I've also learned there's nothing I did to cause someone else to abuse alcohol. I tried really hard in those early days of the pandemic to control our son's drinking. I cannot even begin to count the number of conversations I had with him about normal drinking. We discussed how much is safe to drink, the health effects of drinking too much, or Ethan has two parents that are in healthcare. <laughs> um, we talked about my dad and how his drinking made him an angry grandfather and ended his life much too young and much too soon. As time progressed, the drinking did not stop. Our son just got better at hiding it and doing it away from home, which brought up conversations about safety for others and safety for himself. I became obsessed with constant thoughts of what to say next to him, the brilliant messages that would make him realize what he was doing so he would stop doing it. I thought of so many ways to try to make him happy I fixed all of his problems for him, all in an effort to try to control and stop the scary, destructive behavior. I was trying so hard to control his path and was getting nowhere but out of my own mind and I was losing control of my own life. If only I knew the third C back then, I can't cure it. I don't have the power to cure substance abuse um, or substance use disorder because it is a disease. I can't cure cancer. I can't cure diabetes either. When I really understood that alcoholism is a disease, I started to look at everything completely differently. We heard the phrase, one drink is too many and a thousand is never enough. Yes, <laughs> if he starts, he has told us he has no power to stop. When we learned that alcoholism separates our loved ones from their own values, the pieces of the puzzle started to really come together and make sense. I began to feel liberated from the battering thoughts of what I did to cause all of this. This disease took away my son's values, his desire to always follow the rules, his kindness and give, 
goodness toward everyone, his giving heart, his fun, funny, and engaging conversation, his committed work ethic. He didn't want to lose these values either, but the, the disease of alcoholism took them away from him, at least for a period of time. We also learned it's okay to love our son, but hate the disease. They are separate from each other. So no cure, but like many other diseases, there's treatment and there's hope. Hope started to come back into our lives while our son was at Karen. He even called us early on, full of gratitude and thanking us for bringing him there to help, to get the help he needed. We worked hard, or excuse me, he worked hard during his time at Karen and fully embraced recovery. We embraced recovery for ourselves too. We kept ourselves really busy in our early recovery to soak up as much guidance and wisdom from mothers as we could. That involvement in our own recovery helped to bring sanity to our lives and make our lives manageable again. It also helped us to learn the language of recovery and communicate with our son using the new language he was learning too. Another C maybe, communication. Our son really appreciated our efforts and involvement in our own program. We were all proud and happy for each other. We started to attend weekly Al-Anon meetings in January, 2023, and immediately found a loving group that welcomed us with open arms. I found my sponsor in that Al-Anon meeting too. It took me many months to find the courage to ask her, and it's been an amazing, powerful experience to be guided through the recovery steps with someone as wise, loving, and understanding as she. Our son went on to sober living after Karen, and that community offered a weekly parent support group with a therapist. When we first entered that Zoom group and realized it met for two hours every Wednesday, our initial thought was, maybe we'll pass on this one. But that group quickly became a very valuable part of our process. We all learned from each other, grew stronger together, and now have our own group of alumni parents that continue to meet virtually each week because life keeps happening. We also joined in with our local Karen uh, parent and family support group. We started to attend chapel during our son's stay. And fortunately we live close enough that we can continue to attend chapel on a regular basis. Among all the messages of hope and recovery during the chapel services, we often hear shares that the key to someone's individual success has been to take suggestions and to keep connected and involved. We took the suggestion to find our own recovery path. And it seems like a lot, especially compared to our prior lives of isolation, but we now have a big recovery family of recovery friends that help us, guide us, support us, and love us whenever we are in need. And we are there for them in the same way. Life has become good again. Do I still slip and try to control things at times? Yep. <laughs> when I feel unsettling, uneasiness coming back, I realize I'm not staying in my lane and I'm trying to control someone or something else. My go-to quick trick is to say this serenity prayer to myself. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That usually is enough to snap me into thinking, what am I trying to change or control right now? That is completely beyond my power to change and control. What is powerful though, is that I can change how I am thinking or reacting to something, and I'm able to bring peace and serenity back to myself. It is such a relief to now know how to put a stop to the never ending thoughts that used to crash around my head. I can only fix myself and no one else. My house still is often pretty cluttered, but my brain is much less cluttered now. Living this way is amazing and I never knew before it could be possible and okay to just live with quiet peace and be good to myself. The three C's are a part of our recovery toolbox, an early and valuable tool. 
The guilt of thinking we caused it is mostly long gone. I fully embrace powerlessness and that is a relief. I really don't want the power and the responsibility of controlling others. How could I know what they really need? A cure would be amazing, but for now I have hope and belief in treatment and the recovery process. We have learned that the best thing we can do is support our son with love and compassion, to live and let live. That is to live our own lives and let live, which allows our son to live his own life and be responsible for creating his own life, path, and experiences. We are enjoying this parallel recovery. We are living um, each day where he and we continue to learn the tools of recovery by staying involved and active in the rooms and groups that allow our lives to grow healthier and stronger each day. Thank you. I'm gonna stop the recording.